Hinduism, even though they have literally millions of gods, there is only one God. And so try to keep that fixed on your head. And I'm, I'm going to start at the top. So we have Paramita Brahman. This is the God beyond description. There's really nothing we can even say about this deity because to try to define it or label it would be to box it in and diminish it. And so the most they say about this God is they usually define it in negative terms, like the God that is not two the God that is not bound, the God that is not limited. So they're giving negative things because they don't even want to give positive attributes because each of those would be like a side of the box that would contain this unbound deity. Below this unbound deity are three main manifestations. And this is, so this is the Hindu trinity. Unbelievable. So the Hindus have a trinity. You have Vishnu. And Vishnu is kind of like the, um, well, let's start with Brahman. So we have Paramita Brahman, and then we have Brahma. And Brahma is the creator god of Hinduism. So this is the god that made the world. And if you look at the Hindu creation story, it is so similar, even the order to the Genesis creation account, it's freaky deaky. And you see this being creating all life in the world as we know it. And then we have the next aspect of the Godhead, which is called Vishnu. And Vishnu is like the preserver. This is the one that brings peace and goodness um, and light into this world. He's called the preserver. And then the last aspect of the Godhead is called Shiva. And this is the Lord of the dance. And this is the destroyer. And this is the one that will consume the world in the end. So you have creator, preserver, destroyer, and these are this is the triune godhead of Hinduism. Hinduism also has incarnations. We have the incarnation from the Christian trinity of the sun coming down and incarnating in human form as Jesus of Nazareth. In Hinduism, you have an avatar of Vishnu, the preserver, incarnates as Krishna, and Krishna brings enlightenment to the East. And so Krishna and Christ are very similar type characters. In fact, if you try to evangelize a Hindu and started to describe and explain Jesus to them or Christ to them, they would say, oh, yes, we know this one. We, we call him Krishna. In fact, Yogananda, um, he was a Hindu, and he was sent by his guru to the United States to bring Hinduism to the West. And he realized early on that Americans needed to hear Hinduism in Western terms and languages. And there, it, for those of you in San Diego, if you want to learn more about this, um, he still has his self-realization fellowship up there at Swami's um, in Encinitas. If there's a really beautiful meditation garden that's open to the public and they have a beautiful bookstore, it's like a museum. And the ladies that are very helpful that work there, but there's also a fellowship, the Self-Realization Fellowship, and they do, I believe their services are on Sundays. But if you go in, there'll be a front altar, and on the altar will be a picture of Jesus and a picture of Krishna side by side looking at you. And what Yogananda taught was, just as Jesus came to bring salvation to the West, Krishna came to bring enlightenment to the East. And remember, for the Hindu, it's all one thing. There really is only one religion. All paths lead to the top of the mountain. All rivers flow to the sea. Light from many lamps, water from many wells. But it's all one source. It's all one reality. <laughs>